Here we go. In three, two, no! one. Hello guys. Today we're going to talk about some of the aviation terminologies from the movie Top Gun. Most of you have already seen the movie and some of you are on your way to watch the movie. And this video will take you down every single aviation terminology discussed in the movie and explain what those are. The movie talks about the fifth generation fighter jets here and there. The fourth generation fighter jets are, for example, the F-16s. They're pretty good, they're pretty amazing aircraft, but we have aircraft such as the F-35s, which are the fifth generation fighter jets, which have lower signature, which is basically the enemy is not gonna be able to see you on the radar and have better sensors. So these are some of the differences between the fifth generation and the fourth generation. And you're gonna see this beautiful dogfights happening between the fourth and the fifth generation fighter jets. So now we're gonna talk about hypersonic. You will probably hear this word over and over again, hypersonic aircrafts, hypersonic flights. I mean, what is hypersonic? The speed of sound is approximately 760 miles per hour. I know that's quite fast and that's how fast sound travels. Now, when you start traveling faster than the speed of sound and you go a lot more faster, not just once or twice, when you go five times faster than the speed of sound, that's when you reach hypersonic. So, in a simple description, hypersonic is when you have five times the speed of sound. What's a call sign? Oh, okay, I'll explain. So, a call sign is the name of the aircraft or it could be the tail sign of the aircraft or the registration number of the aircraft. So what I'm trying to say is that when I'm flying as a pilot, I can't always introduce myself as, hi, this is Pilot Rizwan from da da da. No, you cannot do that. You have to have a call sign. You have to talk about who you are as your aircraft's call sign. Most of the times when you're flying a smaller single engine aircraft, you would rely on using the tail number. Every tail of the aircraft has a registration number written on it, which is what's registered in your documents as well. So you would literally use those call signs. It could be A, B, C, and you would say Alpha, Charlie, Six, One, Niner. That's what a call sign is. Now, in the movie Top Gun, you would see everybody has a special call sign. So it's a little bit different in the military and they would all have their assigned call sign. Every person who flies, no matter which plane they jump into, they have their own call sign and they identify themselves when they're talking to the air traffic controller on the radios and so on. They have the school call sign and you can come up with your own call signs. Fellas, this here's Bagman. Hangman. Oh, whatever. All right, so now we're going to talk about hard deck. You're going to hear this word a lot in the movie. They talk about something called as an imaginary barrier in the air. Every pilot training academy, including civil aviation, and the military has something similar. What they're talking about is the minimum altitude you can go while you're training. And in the movie, you'll probably hear references to something as a 5,000 hard deck. What they're trying to do is that you can do all your maneuvers, you can do all your lefts and rights and hard turns and ups and downs and emergency descents and all of the dogfight practice, but you're not allowed to go below the 5,000 for safety reasons, obviously. So that's what a hard deck is. And in Civil Aviation Authority, as a pilot instructor, I can tell you we have something similar. When I ask my instructors or when I ask my students to demonstrate a stall or a spin or a slow flight, I always give them a minimum altitude to stay above. We always tell them to stay above 2,000 feet. We tell them, let's start the stall at 6,000 feet and recover your aircraft before 3,000 feet and so on. So hard deck is basically an imaginary altitude you decide and you set for that flight and you make sure that you stay safe and stay above that so that nobody gets in trouble. <coughs> All right, okay. Wow. Do you guys know what hypoxia is? It's quite scary. Hypoxia is basically the deficiency of oxygen in your blood. And if you watch the movie Top Gun, you've probably noticed that a lot of them speak about hypoxia. This is not just for fighter jets, but even as a regular aviator as a passenger you can experience hypoxia if you are flying let's say at 45,000 feet up in the air now what we're trying to do is there are tests which can actually simulate hypoxia right now I'm sitting in dynamic advanced training in DWC airport in the south of Dubai where they have an amazing system to reduce the level of oxygen in your body everyone experiences different symptoms by the way as a pilot my symptoms 
might be completely different than my co-pilot. So what I'm going to talk about is that when you have hypoxia, you have a couple of seconds left before you can pull the oxygen mask and get some fresh oxygen in your blood. What also happens is that your body slowly starts going unconscious. You start experiencing muscular sluggishness. You're looking at the controls and you're trying to pull something or press something but your body is slowing down and you're unable to perform the actions. And this is what happens when you have hypoxia. So how do I prevent it from happening? Make sure to grab your oxygen masks real quick and get a fresh breath of Now we're going to talk about barricades. If you're flying one of these fighter jets, there's a very small runway on those tiny little ships. You cannot take forever to land. So what happens is these fighter jets are designed to stop on a very small runway by using a very heavy cable. Fighter jets come down, do a low approach, and they have a hook, which is basically a metallic structure, which is waiting to catch a massive thick cable. And as soon as the plane comes really close to the runway, it catches those heavy cables on those ships and it comes to a full stop. So these aircraft carriers are equipped with, just like how you guys see a badminton net, something similarly, there's another barricade which would be for much more bigger emergencies where if an aircraft is unable to catch, if there's a landing gear broken or if the aircraft is just not able to stop itself by using the heavy cable. An entire barricade of mesh like nets heavy metallic structures which will pretty much catch you so the plane just comes and does a crash landing on the aircraft carrier and this barricade will catch the aircraft and slow it down completely yes the aircraft's not going to be usable again you're going to break your aircraft but that's one of the best ways of saving the pilots and doing a crash landing and that's the terminology barricade in three one. So you heard about G-Lock in the movie. If you're wondering what is G-Lock, well, it's abbreviated as loss of conscious induced by G's. We're going to talk about G's in a while, but you need to know that when you lose consciousness because you were unable to handle the G forces acting upon your body, that's called as G-Lock. And it can be quite dangerous. It could be quite deadly. So in a nutshell, the pilot experiences either positive or negative G's and he's unable to recover from the induced gravitational forces on his body and he just passes out. He's no longer in the controls of the aircraft and he's unconscious. This can lead to a disaster where the aircraft can plummet down to the ground. Thank God some of the newer aircrafts have collision avoidance systems and also some of the aircrafts have systems to wake the pilot up when that happens. And now we're going to talk about G's, the gravitational forces. Now, if you're watching this video, sitting on your couch, you are now experiencing one G's, which means one gravitational force. Imagine if the plane had to take off right now, and if the plane was nice and level, cruising, I would still be experiencing one G's. Imagine that I'm right now in a wide body aircraft. As a passenger, I'm sitting on the seat, and the plane starts doing a sharp turn to the left, or it does a sharp turn to the right. In that case, the plane would be experiencing more than one G's. That's more gravitational forces acting upon your body. When I start experiencing either a pitch up or a pitch down or a sudden roll to the left or right, we feel more gravitational forces acting upon our body. Not just our body, the aircraft itself. So one of the most important signs of the gravitational forces acting upon your body, you start feeling heavier if you're experiencing positive G's. When I say someone is experiencing two G's, they would be feeling twice the weight of their body. Your body organs internally are not designed for that either, so they're not gonna be very comfortable. Two G's is still fine, even in a roller coaster ride, not just in an aircraft. When you go in one of these really super fast roller coasters, you can experience up to five, six G's depending on the roller coaster. So the same thing happens in the movie. When they experience a sharp climb towards the hilltop, you see their face is about to explode, right? So your body feels, you, I mean, literally, if you weigh 100 kgs, you could weigh up to 1,000 kgs if you were experiencing 10 gs. 
Having any fun yet? Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I would like to thank Dynamic Advanced Training for allowing us to use their facility here today, here in Dubai South. If you want to know more about Dynamic Advanced Training, check out the link below. I would also like to ask you guys to comment below and let me know if you want me to do more explainer videos about any other topics you might think of. Thank you so much. Subscribe and like my channel. Thank you.